The International Labour Organization has expressed concern over what it calls an upsurge in child labour activities in Nigeria. The organization said that Nigeria has over 24 million children engaged in one form of child labour or the other. According to the report, uh, the Child Situation Index in Nigeria, more than 31 million children representing 50.5% are involved in economic activities, while 24,673 185 million children, representing 39.2%, are engaged in child labor practices. The statistics also show that more than 14 million children, representing 22.9%, are engaged in hazardous labor, citing a 2021 Global Child Labor Report released by UNICEF. There appears to be a global increase of child labor prevalence by 8.4 million, reaching a staggering 160 million. Well, joining us now is a RISE News analyst, Dayo Shabawali, and he will be discussing this concern over increase in child labor in Nigeria and measures the federal government should take to curb the menace. Welcome to the show, Mr. Shamoali. Yeah, it's good to see you. Yeah, it's a pleasure having you as usual. Your, your best friend is back. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, best Thank friend. You. <laughs> nice to you. Nice to see you, sir. Yeah. Thank you so it's much. It's a pleasure. Yeah, All right, then. Let's go straight yeah. into it. I mean, we've seen these economic drivers that are uh, poverty often being cited as uh, the, uh, the primary driver of child labor. When we look at economic hardships, uh, specifically the push for families, uh, the, uh, the families pushing their children to go out and, you know, look for money. Would you say that this is something that we should declare like an, an emergency on based on these numbers that we're seeing? You see these uh, statistics. These are dismal statistics. Mm. They are nothing to write to me about. Yeah. And I hope they are not true. You get me now? Because it shows that we are still in the slave trade era. Yes. Child slavery. And if you look around, you see, um, they gave some analysis there that there are more boys involved in this thing <laughs> than uh, girls mm -hmm. in the rural areas. But in the urban areas, you have more girls. You can see how that works out. Especially you ladies, you want to have house girls. Mm -hmm. You get me? But the boys, they will work in the farms. You see, the... the Genesis of this is crass poverty. And it's still amazing that in this age and time, we are still involved in this. What they are saying is that 50% of our children mm -hmm. are still involved in child labor. It does not say much about us as a developing nation. I know, see, Nigeria is not the highest in terms of the statistics. The J Republic and some. South African missions, they are there. But you see, what is the essence of our education if we still have so many children in slavery, literally? And you see, are we proper urban mix when it is the ILO or UNESCO mm. who will have to come and tell us this degrading, disgraceful statistics? It means you have not really had good governance all along. And see, as a, as a Nigerian, I don't want to believe the statistics. You get me? And I, out of repugnance, I can even tell them to go and search their own backyard. But the facts are there. The facts are there. Uh, the other time, it was about uh, children out of school. But you know, they are all related. And you cannot deny that these statistics affect the North more than the South. Because it's a matter of education. Education is a premium in the Southeast, South, South, Southwest. I know some people in the Southeast, Southwest who will starve to pay school fees for their children rather than them not go. But you see, if the statistics are in the North, the North has always been in power in this nation. What sort of human beings are they? that they have their children not going to school. Mm. Eh? They are all interested in power. And I will always go back to one thing that I've always said. You see, the first two northern leaders at independence, 
Afa Baliwa and the Sadawna of Sokoto, they were school teachers. They wanted the South. I mean, they wanted the North to catch up with the, the North. I mean, they wanted the, the North, to, north catch to catch up, up with, the, with the, south, the South. Because they saw the way Namdi Azikwe, Awolo, and all these Southern people were speaking English. They were lawyers. They were graduates. So they, they wanted to accelerate programs. Although the way they went about it was that they wanted to put Northerners, even though they were not qualified there, in civil service positions and in government. So they sent them on crash courses and all that. But then they were eliminated in the coup of 1966. And ever since, including the military and subsequent uh, Northern politicians and military people, they have abandoned the education of the youths. How they are going to cope with the official, I really don't know. But the statistics are pathetic and disgraceful eh, that at this age and time, we still practice slavery. You get me? With the young people. You see, in the South, if you go to churches, you see some madams come to church, some small, small, small girls. That's the sort of thing they are talking about. In the North, you see, Farms, you know, they, you have young people that they, they pay them with food. They pay them with food to come and do some work for them. It's a pathetic situation. And I thank the ILO, even though I do not like the statistics, for alerting us. And I want government to take that seriously. And you see, in the West, I will all make the education compulsory. Mm -hmm. And that advantage is there. In the East, people we are going to school because of Namdias Zikwe, because of his bombastic language and everybody. But now that has changed, this time use go to business, make money, uh, marry well educated wives. You get me? But you see, education is premium in the South. Education is premium in the South. The uh, North should put its house in order. Because the, the you know, this use. These children, they are the future of any. So they are funeral, they don't take care of them. I'm not happy with the statistics. And we don't and expect it to be. And all the states, they have Ministry of Education. Right. Uh, out of school children, uh, child labor, they have been exposed. Let them react to it. Let them put in place a program that will rehabilitate these people. Also, Mr. Well. Shibwale, you, you <clears> touched <throat> on the fact that it was made compulsory, you know. Um, Education was made compulsory at some point in the past. Mm -hmm. But how has the failure to implement compulsory education on a general scale, federal scale maybe, how has it contributed to what we're seeing in, the, in this um, rise in child labor? Uh, but you see, you have ignored what I've just said. The North, you get me, did not take education as seriously as the South. And the, the, the reason is not far fetched. Islamic education. I remember when I was doing national service, when they created North Eastern State, GOC commanding the Northeast part of the country because the military made education compulsory, universal primary education. You get me? But the GOC, South Dana, reported the governor of the Northeast that you see, he's not implementing the universal basic education. Well, school children, instead of going to school, were under Dogon Yaro trees, learning Islamic something. Go to the north, you still see them. The premium on, is on Islamic studies. And you, you know, you can't become an engineer or a lawyer or a doctor with Islamic studies. Mm. So it's a mixture of a cultural, political mix-up. But which will be obvious to the north because the north has been in power. But unless he does not want to cater for his official. But out of school children and uh, uh, children who are involved in child labor, mm -hmm. they are the future. Yeah. And if they don't get educated, they become uh, willing tools for fundamentalists, for robbers and bureaus, bandits, kidnappers. They will recruit, they give them food. 
and then you start talking of insecurity. But Mr. Shibola, well, I'm so, so sure it's cheating. Mm-hmm. What I was saying is that on the federal level, if right. it was made compulsory in the sense that no one would have an uh, opportunity to back out from this, would it well, not as have... As you made compulsory, as I said, universal basic education. I know, in terms of uh-huh. implementing, because it's still at play. We're still seeing the figures. It's not it's, been implemented. That's what uh-huh. I mean. And we have been told by outsiders. If you talk to any of the governors, they will have ample excuses now mm. to give you. Okay, like Tatari education. Get me? The government made plans a long time ago that you can have funds to establish schools, but you have to make a contribution as a matter of commitment. But they don't go to that. They won't make that commitment. Or if they don't even, and then government was trying to make sure they don't waste the money. They wanted it for education. But if they don't go to, for that, what will government do? So, you see, uh, I don't want to blame anybody, but it's leadership irresponsibility. You get me? Political irresponsibility, that you do not have your two youths be educated in this age mm. and time. It's an embarrassment to all of us. Mm. It's an embarrassment. So, governments, you, what can government do? This is a, a, a democracy. Huh? And you have a federation, so each state is allowed to do what he wants. Mm. <laughs> but I'm just shocked that, see, and we are, we are, we are, we are, we are talking about, we are talking about Northeast, Northwest, where we have massive population. That's why the statistics are, are embarrassing. But they are there. Definitely. Are there. Uh, I definitely agree with you, when, especially when we talk about the fact that state government uh, governments are the ones that need to do something to step up to eradicate child labor. It but that's uh, all the time that we have. I wish we could talk more about the new labor uh, standards bill that was highlighted. But uh, we appreciate your time, as always, of course, here on Newsday, Mr. Dayoshabawale, our Rise News Analyst. Thank you.